Hi, welcome to Above Life Channel. I'm Bridget. This week we are going to talk to John Lennon. In the afterlife, we're going to have a discussion with him. I have some questions that I would like to explore and I think that you will appreciate the topics that I bring up with Mr. John Lennon. So enjoy this channel. It's a dialogue style or a discussion style channel. All right, so let's see if we can bring John Lennon in. Oh, he comes in right away. He's kind of right here by me. He actually then literally moved right to the couch beside me. Okay, that was nice, thank you. <laughs> All right, if you could actually scooch over a little bit so that I'm not like totally turning sideways, thank you. All right, so he's got a hat on, it's uh, black. It actually looks, it's kind of like a ball cap, but it's not a ball cap. It's kind of like a cap that someone would wear um, kind of like a, oh, it's not, I don't know, it's a certain style. Um, it's a little square, but it has a brim to it. And, but it looks like a, like a, it's kind of a baseball cap style in the back. It's not the big brim hat that you may see him with. It's a different style. It's like a cap. Um, kind of like a, somebody that would be like a delivery person might wear or that kind of a thing, you know, and it's just black. And his hair is kind of, you know, a little scrag, scraggly, to be honest, that's what it looks like. It's thin. He has thin hair, fine hair. So it's kind of around and then, you know, his glasses. All right. So his, his iconic circular glasses. All right. So thank you for coming in. And he's got like a black kind of, it looks like a sports jacket or a coat over, but it's really loose, kind of baggy. He looks thin to me. He looks a little thin. Um, I guess I never really paid attention to that, but... All right, so John, thank you for coming again for a discussion. I enjoyed the first channeling that we had together. That was very interesting. And I wanted to specifically talk to you about, there is a famous song that you have, Imagine, that is just iconic and it just transcends. And in that song, you talk about dreaming, being a dreamer, in fact, you say, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. That particular line of that song is actually um, very meaningful to me. It really touches me. And I'm sure many of the viewers are also in the situation where they feel dreams, like they have dreams and they know, they just know that it's such an important part of life. But, but what we're missing is the, how do we make this happen? How do we, how do we live our dreams? How do we bring them into fruition? And I thought maybe you could expand on the meaning of that, that particular line of the song and the context about the term and, and the topic of dreaming, of having dreams. How can we bring that into our human lives? How can we make our dreams happen? He says, he kind of rubs his, his, his uh, knees he has one leg crossed over the top of the other and he kind of rubs one of his knees and is, he's holding onto his foot on this side. He's kind of holding onto his foot on this side and rubbing his knee on this side. And he says, you bring up a good point. I never thought of it in the context of having a dream and making it happen. I thought of it much more in the etherical sense, the ethereal sense of making wishes, you know, and children would, he's showing me like holding up a, the dandelion that has all the white around it, you know, the dandelion that turns into the white where there's seeds that when a child holds it and, you know, blow on it and uh, the seeds just go off into the world and it's the ending for that particular flower, it's the ending of that life cycle, but it, it gives, gives birth or, or he says it makes way for so many other new things, new par parts of it give life, new life to other areas, other places, other, other experiences to come. For me, when I wrote that, that particular, it's funny you should zoom in on that, that you choose that. And the broader context of the song, it's really about peace and about love and humanity and how humans can really lose sight of that and how if we came back to that just simple love then we would have peace there would be peace 
and not just external peace in the world without war, but peace without war within ourselves. You know, man, man's worst enemy is man within himself. And that fight, that struggle, that battle, that war is constantly being fought within the form of dreams if someone were to be distracted and look into themselves deeply, look inside of themselves, that is where you would begin to know that there is this power, this broad array of power that is sent in these forms of seeds or ideas. And you say dreams. What really is the difference between dreams and ideas? That perhaps would be a place to begin this process. What kind of ideas have you had for your life that you, that you, especially those ones that you think are crazy, that you call real crazy, crazy ideas. Those are the best kind. Those are the best kind because they're original. They're original. That's why it seems so crazy because they're original and they're unique to you. Those are gifts. And those are connected to those dreams that are inside of you. That's what those ideas are. So instead of even using dreams, maybe, maybe that word just seems too out of reach. And maybe wish or wishes seems too fantasy-like. But in the context of ideas, that seems a little more realistic. So maybe for the human mind to start thinking about dreams, to bring them into life into this three-dimensional world that you exist in with that physical body part, that physical body piece that is essential to making that connection. The ideas is where you begin. The ideas is where you begin. And if you dismiss them, you're dismissing your dreams. Now, I'm not suggesting that every idea you have like for a song, for example, is a good one. They're not all good ones. But what determines what's good? What determines what song is right for you? Or, or, or that you write and then it's for someone else, another musician, another artist to sing. What, who determines that? It's not the critics. It's not the outside world. It's not the outer voices of the public or of the masses because the masses are asses. They are certainly not not to be given the authority over you. You are a sovereign being. And when you are in that state of sovereignty, of true independence, that is when you are flowing in the state of love. And when you recognize that you are in power, when you are in love, in that most inner world inside of yourself, which is your soul, that is your soul, that is soul, true soul, that is. And it's that connection that brings forward these ideas that when they like resonate, when they don't go away, when they keep coming back to you and they, they keep bugging you, they keep just, you know, tugging at you, there's something there. You need to pay attention to that. Not to the outside world and what they want, what they want isn't, is not at all, at all an indicator of what you should be doing, of who you are, or of what you have come to seed the world with, to seed it. You know, everybody wants to be happy. Happiness is this like grand thing. I mean, if you want to talk about success, it's ha happiness, achieving happiness. And, and you know, because you wrote about this this morning. Okay, so John, you're not supposed to be talking about my stuff when I'm journaling, you know. This is like an interview for you. He says, oh, I know. I didn't think you'd mind too much. You bring forward through things like, through practices like meditation, like journaling, like the writing. 
It's the same as lyrics in a song, like writing. It's, it's, a, it's a state, a flow of awareness, of abundance, of love, of, of true, it's true joy. And you can get into a, a state of bliss by just knowing that you're connected and you're, you're recognizing that you're having thoughts and feelings and you're expressing them and you're writing about this and, and you're, you're, or you're feeling like when you're in a meditation, a really good, you know, that really good place you get to when you're just in this, this, this flowing, this fluid like state. And your mind doesn't know how to even define anything and, and understand anything. There's no symbolism. There's no metaphor. There's only, you know, music or there's only these, these images in your mind that are like, they're not even abstract, but they're so, he's showing me this and it looks like bubble, kind of bubbles that are kind of liquid and like you drop liquid into under a microscope and you'd see this kind of bubbles and flowing but it's really it's thicker than that and it's warm and it feels just like he's giving me this impression of the feeling of this flow and that's what happens when you achieve states of conscious awareness or consciousness rather that's not being understood by your brain but it's allowing it's an exercise where you're connecting your soul to the areas or the, the recesses of the mind that's beyond the human, human mind, because you have to understand that in the mind, yes, there's a lot of talk about ego, the ego state and um, states of survival and the, the animal mind and all these different facets psychology wise, but there is a huge, vast, uncharted territory like space in the mind where there is consciousness there. I believe there is higher consciousness in those spaces. And as a former human person in the state that I'm in now, I can completely validate that that is the truth and that the way to access this deeper, more profound connection and which will bring us back to the point that you had about the dreams and the, and the ideas and the, the, the making it real, realizing it, manifesting it into the life. You can achieve those. You can achieve that with meditation. You can achieve that. Now, it doesn't happen exactly at the time of meditation, but meditation creates a practice, a constant, a constant connection, a, a system, a structure even, even a structure and the ambiguity of it. And you can build this awareness of this flow state and you can, then you can access it. And I know, I know, I know it's like that people can use other um, means to achieve that. And I know you're not into the, I, I know, I know that when you wrote this question down, you asked inside, you said about the, um, about drugs or medicinal things, whether it's herbal or actual psych. Um, psychedelic drugs or that kind of a thing. I know you were like leery about asking me about that a little bit because you didn't want to promote anything like that. And I, and I will share with you that you don't need that. You really don't need that because there is such a level and capacity to your spirit and the connection that your soul has with your mind in the places in your brain, in your human mind, in the context of reality that can attain and achieve those levels of, of expanded reality. And you can do that with meditation, but you want to be consciously aware. See, that's the thing is, is if you get like drugged out into something to translate that into reality, to translate that into actually being successful and bringing your dreams into life. And there, there's a disconnect there. It doesn't, it doesn't flow. You can't, there's, it's separate. You have to be able to move through the processes that are already set up in existence in your mind to be able to make that flow connect. So you have to have both pieces, but 
the mistake that humans make is that they choose one or the other and you can't do that. You've got to use all of the resources that are available to you and that's how you become more successful. That's how your dreams do become a reality for you. That's really how you manifest. And you see, there's such a, an effort that is focused on figuring it out and processing it with the mind. And that's like not even half the capacity so through the meditation process and you achieve this, this practice, this consistent experience of states of conscious awareness that are not defined, that are undefined, and then you get comfortable in that, then that means that you are open to getting kind of spontaneous ideas coming forward that support the dreams that you are aware of. And those spontaneous ideas are coming from your spirit and your soul and that this realm of, of consciousness that you haven't accessed before and then you hook that into the dream, it comes right to the dream and connects with the dream and then it's easier and it's obvious and it's, and it's more um, realistic to bring that in than to life. See, there's a whole, there's so much here that you could explore, that you could discover. There's so much more to the human experience and existence than the humans can even begin to conceptualize. There is not, there are volumes yet to be written on any of this. And I find it fascinating. I, I'm, I'm glad that you're interested in it enough to ask me. I appreciate that. I believe that there are some um, preconceived ideas or um, judgments about how I lived my life and the choices that I've made in my life. Um, and I think it's a, this is a good opportunity to share that there's so much more than what you could just see on the outside and to reflect back to you then as a person that it doesn't matter what is reflected on the outside to other people. It matters what is, what is, is true for you, what is in, in you, that's what matters. And then it's your choice and how you express or share that. But but that should not be determined by what other people, the masses, the public, views, opinions, criticisms, or what they think, opinions, what they think should be done. They need to focus on their stuff. That's where they have power. You have power here. They have power there. And so I would suggest uh, not letting anyone take the power from you because you can't, they can't unless you give it to them. Do not give up your power. Do not give it up. And the pieces of the dreams that you're asking about or the concept of dreaming, that's a huge, that is a major part of that, a major part. Hey, oh, I just popped off my microphone. Okay, just give me a second here. I gotta just breathe this a little bit. That's a lot of information. I'm looking forward to listening back to it. I really am. That's pretty profound. There's a lot of talk about part of why um, I feel personally at Above Life Channel that connecting with the afterlife is really important is because there's so much that we can learn that we haven't yet learned as a humanity. And you, you spoke about that. One of the things that has been very consistent in the last 10, 20 years is this concept of spiritual laws, like the law of attraction, that help us to manifest. And I know that manifesting or the law of attraction or the secret concepts aren't simply about money, but it's really more about attaining, achieving this feeling of happiness, of feeling fulfilled in our lives, of having what we feel that we personally need to have, the experiences of whether it's a tangible object or a, a feeling that we're trying to achieve, we don't really know what that is, but it feels like there's so much more to these concepts and principles. I felt like if I talked to you about the dreams, the dreaming, we would get to some of that, and I think we probably did, but it seems so deep and so profound to me, quite honestly, that I can't even, as you were speaking about it, I can't even process it. The things that come forward to me are the meditation piece and the major awareness of external masses or the public or other people's views and opinions and how that's not, that really has nothing to do with what our, our needs and desires are. Truly, it's separate. 
So with the law of attraction piece, is there something that you could share about that? Like, is that something that you want? you understand or in the afterlife that you'd like to talk about this law of attraction piece or manifesting principles of manifesting can you can you share something about that he kind of leans back and he says there's a lot that's been said about that there's a lot that's been shared about that I don't want to introduce any contradictory or conflicting ideas or principles about that. The important part for me, and you spoke about energy. Did you say energy? Well, I didn't, I don't know if I actually said energy, but that's what I was thinking and feeling (laughs) was that it's all about energy. Well, you're right. That's, that's accurate. He says that he says that's correct about energy so the law of attraction is about energy he says that's no mystery that's not mysterious the part that's the the hard the difficult part to understand is the energy and how it flows because it is unique to the individual and to the alignment that they have with the universe with the the principles and the relationships that they have within their human life experience, within the previous lifetimes that they've had, and the different multiple cultures that could be, it's very, there's a lot of depth here. And my gig is much more connected to the energy of love. The energy that flows of love, and I'm, I'm very pleased, I'm very content with knowing that the things that I shared are part of the momentum energy, you would say momentum, Bridget, about love, love. And true love isn't external love, it's internal love and eternal love. And the only way to know that is to experience it. And to experience it is to to allow yourself to be in the energy of it. And that is a practice a a desire to feel that way people don't articulate i want to be loved people instead would much rather say i want to be recognized or i want to be respected or i want to be heard all of these things are just layers of them saying i want to be loved i want love For my role in the afterlife, love is a key core piece of that. And I believe that's why you've come and asked me about these other concepts and these other other things that you feel are important to you and, and to those who watch. Watch your channel. So if you were to ask me about law of attraction or manifesting, I would say my my response my direction, my teaching, my sign pointing would say one thing. It would just say love. And the action step I would say, or the how to do it, is to be love inside of yourself, to love yourself, to be loved by you, to be loved inside of you. That's the how to. Okay, that is a little bit different than what I expected. I expected you to talk about peace. I really did, because peace feels like this external thing. It feels like a big theme or anthem for you, like in the, in the song Imagine, you know, and, and you feel very peaceful to me. I totally thought, in fact, I had questions all about peace written down and to describe that to me, but it sounds like very consistently it's love, that love is this uniting energy. It's the everything. It's the way to, it's the way and it's the process, it's the practice and it's the state. Like it's the flow. It's what we're trying to achieve and what we need to receive at the same time. Is that, does that make, does that reflect what you, that's about, that about says it, yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, John. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being willing to share. 
Um, I knew he would be philosophical, you guys. I kind of knew he would expand and share a bunch of stuff, and I'm not really sure all of that content. I can't wait to go back and watch it. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel. You've been watching a discussion with John Lennon from The Afterlife. I specifically asked him about dreams to explain to us how we can manifest our dreams and bring them into reality. And I asked him about law of attraction and manifesting. And so after, as you watch this video, if you have questions or if there are some things or comments that you wanna share about this topic, go ahead and write them in the comments below. If you found this particular afterlife discussion helpful to you, go ahead and give it a like. If you know other people that would benefit from it, make sure you share it. And then don't forget to click the red button, the little bell icon that will make sure that you subscribe to the channel, Above Life channel, and then you'll never miss a new weekly channel with our interesting afterlife conversations. I hope that I hope that you have felt inspired today at your spirit. I hope that this video brings you some insights um, to live your life more fully, more completely. Thank you so much for watching.